Redline Logbook here for Chapter 14 of Wisteria. So we start off the chapter with a flashback of Yagner's past when he was a child, and he is straight up being called a failure by what seems to be the Queen of the Elves. Apparently, his level of magic power is on par with a mage student, which is considered inferior to an elf, so elves must have insane levels of magic power. And two, that big illusion that elves are able to do Apparently, his is considered a poor version of it, so he is just completely rejected by the elves outright. In fact, he's so rejected that his arm is literally just cut off by the Queen of the Elves. It's definitely the same arm that got broken by that devil, so he must have reattached it at some point. Because we saw the bone break, it's not like his arm is artificial or anything. Obviously, Yagner was dreaming all of this. This was an old memory of his. And so when he wakes up, he realizes he's actually in the 11th floor because he immediately recognizes the monsters that Will is currently fighting shouldn't be there. And we actually get to see all of them were separated. They didn't all fall together. They fell down different tunnels, apparently. So Yagner and Will are together. Julius and Thawne are together. And Clinette and Liana are in a third group. Liana, of course, is always as calculating as ever. Pulls out her clock and figures out exactly what the time is. And then and thinks to herself, okay, so we need to find the others because if we don't, either us or the rest of our party is going to end up dead. After Will is done killing off the monsters, he then runs over to Yagner to apply first aid, but he's of course smacked away because Yagner refuses to be touched by him. Will is like, okay, but I can't just leave you like this. I need to help you. And Yagner's like, I can just do first aid on myself. Leave me alone. Will has no choice but to accept this and lets him patch himself up while he tries to figure out the situation. Currently, the two of them are down to almost no weapons and very few magic items. The two of them have enough food for two days, so does everyone else, but because they're going to be fighting constantly in the 11th floor they actually have enough for one day so that means they have 24 hours to escape their lives will comes up the same plan as lena which is we should just go find the rest of our group yagner says in a situation like this smart move would be just to stay still and wait for rescue but will points out that that's not how the dungeon works if it can it will kill you Plus, rescue will be impossible with that devil on the 10th floor. It will annihilate anyone who tries to go near it. So, using a magic item to communicate, Walkner is able to speak with another professor who's currently on the 7th floor camp. And what she informs him is that the 7th floor base camp has been completely annihilated by a stampede. Yet the giant herd of monsters just started rampaging and destroyed everything. So, the sleepy looking woman, Professor Eliza, is apparently the only professor left alive. The rest have been murdered. The corpses, the beheaded corpses of two of the professors were found crucified to the wall near their base camp which means every single camp going down from floor 7 to 10 have been annihilated and every professor excluding elisa who's on floor 7 has been killed and obviously we all know who did it it was those two guys the guy with the knives and headless and most likely headless was the one who did it because he's currently juggling the two professors heads after all professor edward immediately cancels the expedition and then orders him and Professor Walkner to go in to save all the students. Losty then calmly walks into his tent. Once again, very suspicious. Still believe that he's an agent for the tower. Back with Will and Yagner. Yagner is currently using his search ability to scout out all around, and Will asks him to stop doing that because he's just wasting his magic. Yagner says that's the only way we can avoid being ambushed. Will then explains how he was taught the best way to use search, which is distance, not duration. So the plan is very simple. Yagner, at a certain point, will activate his search for its maximal range, and then turn it off. And then Will and Kiki will handle the search from there, using their natural senses. And then once they get a certain number of steps, Yagner will then activate search again, and they will repeat this process over and over again. This way, Yagner doesn't waste his magic, and at the same time, they're able to keep themselves safe and avoid fighting. Because that should be their number one goal now that they're on the 11th floor, is to avoid fighting as much as possible. Otherwise, they're just going to be worn down and eventually die. Yager then asks Will how is he able to stay calm in such a situation. And Will's response is, experience. Will has solo died in the dungeon multiple times, and through trial and error, he eventually picked out methods of how to survive. That's when three monsters called Gagasas show up. Gagasas are just giant pig creatures without eyes. Will decides to take on the two in the front, and he asks Yagnar to handle the one in the back. Yagnar uses magic to knock down one of the monsters, and then he witnesses Will go into full combat mode against the other two, and he's just ripping them to shreds. Yagnar is so surprised by this that he doesn't realize his monster gets back up and charges at him. He realizes he doesn't have enough time to make it a full chant, so he decides to create an illusion. The fire that he did before to keep the other monsters at bay. The only problem is Gorgesas don't have eyes, and so illusion magic doesn't work on them, but they also have an extremely strong sense of smell. As such, they can pinpoint where he is even if 
he did try to hide. Gorgasses also have the ability to open their mouths insanely wide. Like, it's almost the length of, of its own body. That's how big its mouth is. Yagon, of course, freaks the fuck out because he's about to be eaten alive. That's when Will tosses one of his swords, hits the monster, gets it off balance before he can then cut it down completely. Yagner then laughs at himself, how pathetic he is, and then Will's response is, well, you're fine, because all Will understands is that he's inexperienced in the dungeon, so that's why he freaked out and lost control for a second. But Yagner's like, no, I won't be fine, I'm a failure. And as you can imagine, Will just stares at him in complete confusion, because from Will's understanding, Yagner is one of the top three in the class, so the fact that he considers himself a failure makes no sense. Anyway, that's the end of the chapter. If you enjoyed, please subscribe, give a thumbs up, so you can enjoy more with and other amazing things. Thank you and have a great day.